My name's Guy Kestevan, and this is my second first ride on my Pace RC295 Trail Assassin project build. So, the big thing about this RC295 <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Where was I before? Right, and binned it. Basically, the thing about this base, what makes it stand out is A, it's long, it's also very, very slack for a trail bike. So, 64 degree head angle, super long reach, and a long wheelbase to match. So, it's got really stable speed manners, but as you can see, it still doesn't mind a bit of ducking and weaving as long as you've got that oh hello i have gone the wrong way ah <laughs> fresh trail <clears throat> as long as you put that super short head stem on <clears throat> oh, just running wide how come this is easier in the dark <laughs> less options i guess And it still pops up as you can see when you need it to. And while it's definitely enduro angles, it pedals with a very, very flat character, so really easy to uh, tap out tempo. The shock and the way that full float of linkage works together, but I haven't felt the need for the uh, Pedal or off, definitely not the lockout function yet. Only thing you have got to be careful is your heels can hit the stays. If you pedal slightly heel inwards, first take your climb, I was twisting about a bit to get my upper body engaged. Couldn't work out what the clunk was coming from the back. Turns out it's my shoes bouncing off the seat stays. So. And that's with a relatively wide stance shoe. So if you do have, if you know you get pedal heel in, probably not the bike for you. Also, because it's long, really long in reach, and this hump carbon front wheel is relatively light, the weight's in the rear wheel, because there's more spokes in it. You have to be a bit more conscious about keeping the nose down and sliding forwards on the saddle because it's steeper than an old school bike but it's actually not as steep as uh, Adrian's more recent hardtail revisions. Oh, we're doing this one. <laughs> this is the one with drops on, isn't it? So, back to the geometry side of things. Yes, it needs a bit more notice and a bit more space change direction suddenly, I mean, that super short stem, short offset fork, means it's no problem switching it in terms of traction or initiating leans, as you can see. It is, you know, physically a longer, bigger bike. But what it means is, together with that you know, low center of gravity, it's just so stable. And just as you fly straight, Hold straight in a just minimal drama, even on quite hectic sections of trail. And while it can seem over damped over small stuff, the damping when you're hitting bigger stuff like this, absolutely impeccable. So it holds its shape, that excellent, super stable shape, amazingly well. This is interesting, it's only kind of second and a half time up the hill and I've already kind of automatically adjusted so I'm not clipping my heel anymore and shame I didn't have it on back there because technical traction very very impressive just checked in with the shock was there and I've got it pretty much dialed in 
just said, I need to lose a bit of air spring pressure, so just popped a bit of air out. See how it goes on the next descent, but certainly no issue climbing back up, even to steep and techie stuff. But then, you know, even with a sturdy set of carbon wheels on and uh, reasonable weight dissector tyres, still 13 and a half kilos. Which for a GX bike, you know, and a very affordable one at that, really uh, very respectable. Yeah, all right. I haven't let go of them yet. And Ryan's just asked what grips these are, and of course they're the uh, nice, fat, and super sticky uh, Beyond recycled grips. So, and uh, said, are they any good? And I have to say, well. My hands have stayed on fine so far, and uh, I've ridden them in some pretty rancid conditions already, so. Yeah, I'd say very good so far, these ODI grips, and they're uh, kind to the planet. And if you were concentrating back there, you would see that while that wider back end might mean it uh, catches your feet a bit, it means it absolutely lost our off camber sections with those two piece clamp linkages. It carves gormers so well. And then as soon as you pedal, I mean, these hubs have got fast reacting free up anyway, but just, it's almost like you're riding fixed wheel. As soon as you make a turn of those nice XO1 pretty alloy cranks, it just surges forward. So direct and connected. Whoa, whoa, whoa. that's not the line. <laughs> the way it <laughs> nearly, the way it just smoothly puts in speed where you need it to. The whole bike is just so relaxed and they're full of speed. Even when things get pretty tight and techy like that, and they can hear Ryan braking behind me. Oh, I've gone the wrong way. <sighs> <laughs> Running away my lead. Serves me right. Laughing about Ryan breaking behind. Not paying attention yourself. But just so smooth. So connected, huh? When you get the chance to straighten up and see the bottom, you know it's gonna be so stable. You can just go. <sighs> And of course, having a long, slack bike basically just buys you time. That puts the front wheel further out to react, which is why this feels so relaxed and calm and confident. And then, obviously, the steeper it gets, the more, the faster it gets, the more you need that stability. And also, what's really helped, I've added a couple of volume spaces to the bike, so that's not diving as much, riding in a very similar way to the back end now, more sort of planted. It's just coming into sections like that, knowing it's just gonna absolutely rail around on these dissectors. And now the frame's super stiff and accurate. That hump wheel has got that deliberate bit of compliance in the front, just to help guide you through, kind of path of least resistance there. And then the back, with that super broad section, just got all the drive and precision and that 32 spoke wheel just tighter for putting the power down as well. So it's just super calm and relaxed through the techie stuff. And then you can let it go. Oh boy, this is a pure enduro anchored speed freak. <laughs> oh. Trail Assassin was the right project name for this beast. Really was. <laughs> I just hit right. Oh! <laughs> so, that's the second time I've got into trouble from Ryan for driving that way in those times. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> for just getting carried away and hauling on too hard at the bottom of that descent. 
up onto got speed up and I really don't think that's accidental that's just purely a danger and going a lot with this bike it's just once it gets up to speed it does not want to brake stride it just falls you know trying to prod it to that stability the way the suspension works and just the way it feels so relaxed and comfortable when you probably be oh no I keep getting that line wrong damn it guys come on <sighs> pay attention stop talking give the bike a chance but luckily because it pedals so well and like I said there's that instant connection there just those little kind of two pedal strokes will really go a long way to maintaining and restoring speed even when whoa, and hop it over there yes she got that line sort of right this time come on yeah whoa oh no <laughs> oh absolute nemesis <laughs> <sighs> Gotta have another go at that. <laughs> Can't finish like that, but it's pure pilot error. Gotta give it some, even though, whoops, social distancing. Because <laughs> that bottom bracket is pretty low, so it will catch a log given the chance, but I can say, stability, sure footedness on this beast. <laughs> Proper trail weapon. Uh, well that ground carriage can catch it out in the logs it just means when it's a case of just turning and putting the burn on this RC295 is just ridiculously <laughs> fast yet composed proper weapons grade rider is this this is not mucking about in any shape or form. This is all about speed, harnessing it, controlling it, and absolutely destroying trails and people. So there you go. Hopefully that was a lot easier to watch and listen to than the previous horror. Uh, learned a bit more about the bike. Uh, that shock tune on the forks definitely working better. As you can see, even with the two tokens in, I'm still slapping through to full travel. Uh, shock Wiz says I still need to lose a bit of air out the shock, even though I'm almost on full travel there. But otherwise, it's pretty well dialed. It's definitely a very damped kind of race tune feel, but with the stability and the geometry length of the bike, this is just, uh, just, just been so utterly calm and confident even when you know properly pinning it on sight unseen trails that i really don't know i mean obviously i've been caught out a couple of times by stumps and that but whew, when it gets the chance to uh, hit some open trail this thing is absolutely warp speed so thanks for watching uh thanks for subscribing click for notifications so you don't miss the next video hope this is made up for the last one uh Thanks, as always, to my Patreon subscribers who pay a small monthly fee to help support the channel and make unsponsored videos like this possible. And they get exclusive extended and early edits and more behind-the-scenes stuff uh, as a thank you. Uh, please consider joining them uh, if you want to, uh, you know, see the channel grow more and get more from the channel. Uh, thanks very much to Gyro, to uh, Riders Eyewear, to Camelback, to Can't Quit, uh, Mavic... Leah, can't quit again, and Physique. Oh, and Gyro for the gloves. Obviously, thanks to Pace for supplying the frame, SRAM for the drivetrain and brakes, uh, RockShox for the fork, ODI for grips, uh, Pace for the stem as well, SDG for the saddle, Maxis for the tyres, Hunt for the wheels, and it's got muck off sealant in there. Thanks to Crank Brothers for the pedals, Crud for the XL fender. But most of all, thanks to you guys for watching. I've been Guy Kesteven on Guy Kes TV talking about my pace RC295.